from winter break and getting ready to jump right into our unit on trigonometry. And we're gonna start with lesson 7.3 using similar right triangles. 7.1 and 7.2 were Pythagorean theorem, which we've already discussed in this class in, first, in uh, the first semester. Now a note here, I find this very fitting when we are working in chapter seven. This is a chapter that a lot of students struggle in. So like this man climbing up the wall, you wanna make sure you have your supports in place and you want to hang on, just keep hanging on. As long as you keep moving forward, doing your homework, doing your work, this chapter will make sense to you at the end of the chapter. So are these two triangles similar? Well, 80 plus 70 is 150. And so 150, this would have to be 30 would equal 180. So the same thing here, 80 plus 30 plus 70 would equal 180 degrees. So they are similar, and that is from the angle-angle similarity postulate. So for this next problem, they want us to find x, and this is a Pythagorean theorem problem. So we can use, get my calculator here, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we're going to do 14 squared is 196. Sorry, my slate is not working this evening. I am using a pen here. And 48 times 48 is 2,304. So actually, let me go over here to this, and I'll do 196 plus 2,304 equals c squared. And the way we do that is we use that little carrot to indicate c squared. So 2,304 plus 196 is going to be 2,500. equals c caret top square, and the square root of 2,500 is 50. So 50 equals c. And we can check that we are correct. Yay! She shoots, she scores. So we're going to get into some theorems now. When the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse, of a right triangle. The two smaller triangles are similar to the original triangle and to each other. So when we have triangle A, B, C, and we draw an altitude here, we end up with three similar triangles. Now what I also always say to people is take these triangles and rotate them around so that they all orientate the same way. So I'm gonna actually try and do that here. The magic of computers, right? So that's our first triangle. I'm going to have it here. And I'm going to try to orientate it around so that that right angle symbol is right like that. Just actually the same way that one defaults. But in order to line these up correctly, what you want to have to do is have the smaller side on the bottom. So let's see if we can create a mirror image. I think there is a way to do that. But if I don't find it quickly, uh, mirror Okay, so now I have this one. So now when I rotate it, my shorter side is going to be on the bottom. Get rid of that one for a second. So this is my original large triangle, A, C, B. And I have it orientated so that the shorter base is on the bottom, the longer leg 
is going up and down and the hypotenuse is across from the 90 degree angle. And then my last one here that triangle here I want to edit, paste it here and I'm going to transform mirror in the y-axis and there you go. So then now I can see that triangle C B, D is similar to A, B, C, and C, B, D is also similar to A, C, D. But that's really what you want to do to try and make sense of these is to orientate them uh, so that they line up. You can redraw them. I obviously have just cut and pasted here in the Promethean software. So identify the similar triangles in the diagram. So basically they've gone through and they've done this activity of what we've just drawn. Um, and they've taken each triangle, in this case they put the longer leg on the bottom and the shorter leg to the, the right side of the triangle. We can use this concept of similar triangles to be able to solve problems. So here we have a swimming pool and you can see the swimming pool has this wedge shape down at the bottom where the deep end is. And the deep end actually creates a 90 degree angle. So you have this first deep end and I'm going to orientate it, that's not what I want, a triangle. And I'm going to orientate it to how you view it. So this, this, transform, I want to mirror that in the x-axis, okay? So I'm going to delete that triangle. I'm going to go back over here. So now I've kind of created that triangle, and it is triangle R, S, T. The right angle is at angle T. R, S is 165 inches. R to T is 152 inches. T to S is 64 inches. Okay, now I'm going to have another triangle. So you can kind of see which one I'm dealing with here. I'm going to deal with RTM. So they drew an altitude from T to intersect the opposite side, the, hy uh, the hypotenuse there, at RS. And this time, the right angle is this angle M. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to take this triangle and I'm going to edit, copy it. And then I'm going to edit, paste it. And so I have another triangle. I'm going to put it over here. It's a little bit smaller. So I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. Now this is where it gets difficult to see this. But this triangle here, the 90 degrees is at M. I can see that the hypotenuse of this triangle is RT. I can see, fortunately, that the shorter leg here is MT, the longer leg is MR. So this is T and this is R. R to T is 152 inches long. I don't know T to M. That's actually what I want to find. I'm going to call that X. Now that we have this all laid out, we can see that even though we only have the one dimension that we're finding here, this x corresponds to the side that's 64 inches in the other triangle. The hypotenuse on this smaller triangle to the hypotenuse on the larger triangle. So we're going to go ahead and cross multiply. 165 times x is 165x. 64 
times 152 is 9,728. 9,728 divided by 165 is roughly about 59 inches. So this MT is 59 inches. They want to know the maximum depth of the pool, so that makes it a little trickier. They want to know, I wanted a different color here. They wanted to know here all the way down. So if this depth is 48 inches, plus the part we just found is 59 inches. The maximum depth is 107 inches. Okay, and we can see that we got the correct answer right there. In case you're curious, that is about 8.92 feet is the maximum depth of the pool. The next two problems are guided practice using similar triangles, but we're going to learn some ways to do these problems involving some theorems. And I think it makes it a little bit easier because you don't have to turn the triangles around to figure out what goes where. So we're gonna come back to these problems after we go through the learning in this unit. Now, I do just laugh here because this book, which sometimes I feel like goes through in excruciating detail things you guys already know, for instance, they did two whole sections on Pythagorean theorem and Pythagorean theorem converse, which is a prior grade skill, they jump into geometric means. And they say, you have learned that the geometric mean of two numbers, A and B, is the positive numbers X such that blah, 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 blah. And you're probably thinking right now, I have never heard of a geometric mean. So let's go through what a geometric mean is and let's compare it to what an arithmetic mean is. So in the past, to find the mean or the average of two numbers, you added them together and divided by two. So if you had seven and three, to find the mean, seven plus three is 10. You divide it by two. So what you've called the mean, but it's really the arithmetic mean, is five. Now, to find the geometric mean, you would take those two numbers Set, but multiply them, you get 21, and then take the square root. So uh, roughly 21 square root is, the geometric mean is 4.58, okay? Or seven and three are, um, the factor of 21, so in simplest radical form, it would be radical 21. So once again, a geometric mean is actually you take two numbers together, two numbers, you multiply them, and you take the square root. Let's say you had three numbers. Let's say it's seven, three, and two. Well, in the past, to find the arithmetic mean, I'm just going to call it AM for abbreviation points here, you would add all these up. And you get 12 and you divide it by three because now you have three numbers and you'd get the, the arithmetic mean is four. For the geometric mean, we would multiply these all together and we would get 42. But since you have three numbers and taking, instead of taking the square root, you would take the cube root. And I do not have right in front of me there a scientific calculator, but I do off camera and I'm gonna do 42 Cubed root is approximately 
so 3.48. That's what a geometric mean actually is. You'll learn it, use it more definitely in statistics, but we're going to refer to that name here. What's going to happen for our problems basically is this geometric mean is going to represent one dimension in one triangle and then a different dimension in a different triangle. So we have triangle A, B, C. We drew an altitude, and as we learned earlier in this lesson, we're now going to have three similar triangles, and we've orientated them and moved them out here for you. So A, B, C is the original triangle. C, B, D is the smaller of the two triangles that were created, and A, C, D is the larger. And there's a lot of proportions involving geometric means. In that, for instance, in this problem, leg CD is here, and it's also here. Okay? In triangle one, it is the length of the longer leg. And in triangle two, it is the length of the shorter leg. Okay, we could do this same thing looking at leg CB, which is in this triangle. There is no CB because there's no vertex B in triangle two. There is a CB here. And we can see that in triangle one, CB is the hypotenuse. And in triangle three, it's actually the shorter leg. And we'll notice that triangle AC, sorry, not triangle AC, side length AC, there's no vertex A in triangle one, but AC is the hypotenuse in triangle two, and it is the longer leg in triangle three. So realizing that the same leg or the same side could be a leg in one triangle, a longer leg in one triangle, and a shorter leg in another, or it could be a leg in one triangle and a hypotenuse, there are some theorems that we can use. You'll notice that when they set this up, they always have the numbers that are the same dimension. So for instance, CD and CD. In the bottom, in the denominator of the first ratio and the numerator of the second. That's because when you get into higher math, and I think I actually touched on this in, I think, first period. Okay. You don't really need to fully understand this, but basically there's what's called means and extremes. So I always think of this kind of like position one, position two, position three, position four. But positions two and three are your means. They're the ones in the middle. And then extremes are position like one and four. And if you get really involved, at some point they call this the fourth proportional, they may say find the fourth proportional, that's much more advanced math, but that's why I kind of already call it one, two, three, and four. Basically what you want to make sure you get here is whatever side, dimension, you're realizing is the same in two triangles, it goes in this second position and this third position. So we're not yet going to do these problems because I think it's important to first understand that there are some theorems rather than just using the theorems and say, oh, what did we do? Um, which sometimes works. I think in this case, it's better to look at these because these do get very confusing. So the geometric mean altitude theorem, this was the one that personally I think is easy. And this one I think is, it's not difficult, it's confusing. So let's go with the easy one first. In a right triangle, the altitude from the right angle hypotenuse divides the hypotenuse into two segments. Okay, makes sense. So you have this segment CD. It's the altitude of the large right triangle. Okay, 
This altitude CD, whatever that value is, let's say they say it's nine, or let's say it's X, or let's say it's three, it's going to go in the second position and the third position. Really doesn't matter which way you put these, but BD and AD, which are the sections of the hypotenuse, you're gonna plug those in there. So I think that if we go back, there's actually, it's not the right problem. I think there are actually some that we can do this with. Um, no, these are all the next problem. So let's find a problem that we can use this. I think it'll make it much easier. So here's a good example, okay? So in this case, we're trying to find the length of this altitude. And this altitude goes from the vertex to the hypotenuse, and divides the hypotenuse into half. Since we're using the geometric altitude mean for altitude, this x, this altitude that's ultimately what we're going to find, goes in the second and the third positions. Now, it doesn't matter how you put it. You can put 9 and 5. You just need in the first position and in the fourth position the two different parts of the hypotenuse. x times x is x squared. 9 times 5 is 45. That means the square root of 45. We could factor this back to 9 and 5. 9 cancels out. Square root of 9 is 3, so x equals 3 radical 5. Unless told, always assume you are using simplest radical form. So that's an example of how to do that problem. Let's go back and talk about the geometric mean leg theorem. So this one gets a little bit more confusing. In a right triangle, the altitude from the right angle into the hypotenuse divides the hypotenuse into two segments. Okay, we got that. But now the length of each leg of the right triangle is the geometric mean of the lengths of the hypotenuse, that's the total hypotenuse, and the segment of the hypotenuse that is adjacent to its leg. Huh? We'll go through that. Don't fall off the cliff. So when we have the geometric leg theorem, there's actually two that we can do here because this triangle has two legs. It has leg CB and it has leg AC. So we put in this one case, we would put CB in the second position and the third position. The first position is the total hypotenuse, A to B. The fourth position is the segment of the hypotenuse that is attached to the leg that we're using as the mean. If I use AC, and you would you really you decide what you use based upon what you have. So if I were to use AC, then the first position would be the entire hypotenuse, and then the fourth position would be AD because that's the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to AC. So now we're going to go back and look at this problem. And you can see here, we're actually going to be able to use the geometric mean leg theorem. We know we can't use altitude because this altitude here, there's no number. But they said that the leg is the geometric mean, so I can put that in the geometric mean position. Y and Y. The to first number here is the total length of the hypotenuse. The last side here is the segment of the smaller triangle that's adjacent, so that's three. I cross multiply, I get y squared equals nine times three is 27. I'm just gonna, sorry, 27. So y is gonna be, 27 is nine times three, take out a nine, 3 radical 3. And that way, 
I didn't have to do the work that they did here of trying to orientate out these triangles. Probably want a few more examples of that. We're going to skip the rock climbing wall and do that another day because it's a real world problem. It gets much more confusing. But we can look at this problem here, which involves finding a leg. So we want to find leg A. Okay. In a minute, we could also find leg B, but let's find leg A. So the total hypotenuse is 10, and the adjacent leg length is 6. A squared equals 60. So A equals 12 times 5, which is 3, times 4, times 5. Factor that out. And neither 3 nor 5 are uh, perfect squares. So my answer is 2 radical 15. Now, as I said, I could actually find B, correct? If I wanted to find the other leg, I could also use Pythagorean theorem, but I'm kind of enjoying having some practice of using the geometric mean leg theorem. So B, B. The entire hypotenuse is 10. This time, the segment adjacent to B is 4. Do my work up here. So B squared equals 40. B equals square root of 4 times 10. That would be 2 and 5. That's not going to help me. 2 radical 10. So it's another way to solve the problem.